This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. What? You got a plan. I am on a six year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking. So join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week, it's another episode of Mono Hull Heresy with a trip to Sweden and the beautiful Halberg Rassi 57. Today we will one, review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels. Two, do a full tour asking, what would Sylvia say? Three, navel gaze at an innovation or adjustment that just may, might make life aboard a little easier. Four, have a look at the market for three to five year old pre-owned comparables. And five, give it a Dave score and compare the results with all our previously reviewed yachts. As always, all this fun will be sandwiched between a pairing of wine and a work of art from the same region as the guest yacht in an effort to capture the culture and people who gave birth to these wonderful vessels. Waves, wine, art and ideas. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes. So let's get going. From high above Vancouver, we head southeast down the continent and the Atlantic to the southern tip of Africa and the yards of last week's guest yacht, the Nisna 500 SE. From here, we head way up north to Sweden and the home of this week's guest yacht, the Halberg Rassi 57. Since I could find no Swedish wine in Vancouver and just can't pull myself to buy any more Nordic firewater, I'm taking you way west for a treat in British Columbia's wonderful Okanagan Valley to try this week's wine pairing Black Hills Estate Wineries 2020 Tempranillo. Since I could find no Swedish wine in Vancouver and just can't pull myself to buy any more Nordic firewater, I'm taking you way west for a treat in British Columbia's wonderful Okanagan Valley to try this week's wine pairing, Black Hill Estate Wineries 2020 Tempranillo. Black Hill Estates Winery vineyards have some of the most favorable grape growing conditions in the country, resulting in exceptional terroir. Located on the famed Black Sage Road, 13 kilometers north of Soyuz, BC, and 10 kilometers south of Oliver, this places Black Hills Estate in the Okanagan Valley Appalachian, centered in the middle of Canada's only official desert. The resulting microclimate leaves us with one of the hottest, driest, and sunniest sites in the country. And just in case you're wondering if Canada can really be hot, uh, we've had a couple of years in that valley where it's, well, it's regularly 47, sometimes approaching 50 degrees Celsius. In fact, with our northern latitude, we have more sunlight hours than Napa Valley in the key growing months of June through August. The vineyard's west-facing slope aspect and deep desert sand experience, experiences exceptional uh, diurnal temperature variation, providing daytime heat that fully ripens the grapes, followed by cooling nights that allow acid retention. The result, intensely flavorful grapes. With only 100 cases of this vintage produced in 2020, Tempranillo is vibrant ruby in color and packed with ripe raspberry, cherry and blueberry aromas, along with subtle floral notes. This bold fruit expression is complemented by hints of cedar, licorice and fresh sage. Maturation in seasoned French oak barrels for 18 months has allowed the essence of the Tempranillo fruit to shine through. The rich concentration and velvety ripe tannins suggest this full body wine can continue to evolve over the next decade, making it a great candidate for celery. Oh, you're gonna like that. Cheers, let's go have a look at that boat.
having a look at the outside of the Halberg Rassi 57. She is a handsome, handsome vessel. Very Swedish. Uh, you know, the lines are almost classic and yet modern. It, it, it really is a fascinating uh, combination. Uh, you know, we saw the Passport, definitely classic. This is a flavor of classic in a modern hull form. Uh, you can see this beautiful uh, cockpit there with real easy access forward, a very nice aft deck, beautifully clear foredeck, really nice dinghy locker, masses of room to store, a, a really neat hardtop option uh, that gives you a nice shelter in a fair section of the cockpit itself, and that beautiful modern swim platform. Okay, let's have a look at who we're going to compare this to. We're looking at the Genoa Yacht 55, the Dufour 530, the Moody 54 DS, the Halberg Rassi 57, and the Passport 545. And you can see what I mean there in these profiles about the classic yet modern look of the Halberg Rassi 57. Very low windage, really nice looking vessel, and you really don't sacrifice much in the inside for that low windage. Um, the Passport, a, a smaller vessel, obviously, um, and, and a far more classic hull design. Uh, the Dufour and the Genoa Yacht 55, very modern hull shapes. Uh, and then the, the Moody 54 Deck Saloon, a completely different animal. Looking onto the upper deck, you can see uh, the Genoa Yacht 55 wildly innovative with that massive catamaran-like aft deck slash cockpit slash entertainment slash day bed, whatever. Uh, of course, you have the option then for a hard top and a hard uh, a spray hood uh, that uh, basically uh, encloses an upper uh, deck or upper saloon, if you will, with a... Um, uh, a dinette to the starboard and a beautiful nav table uh, forward facing uh, to the port and then forward not a lot of clear deck because they've extended that headroom way forward in this vessel uh, and you'll see why when we get in there uh, the Dufour 530 a very standard vessel layout um, other than those uh, uh, large uh, uh, skylights that they have throughout that really bring in a lot of light to the vessel and that uh, mid that uh, sort of uh, uh, settee at the aft there between the two helm positions the 54 ds from moody completely different uh, single uh, level uh, for the cockpit for the helm stations and for the saloon itself uh, and then all of your berths are down uh, like a catamaran would be. In my favorite configuration, the galley is also down, sacrificing one of those berths. Uh, and then forward, you've got some great uh, entertainment area. Very high bulwarks, very safe uh, side decks, and a forward area that you have uh, uh, factory cushions for to really make a, a nice entertainment area. Halberg Rassi, there she is. Very, very... Uh, a modern hull shape taking the beam almost all the way to the back uh, yet retaining that classic uh, deck plan so you've got a, a very nice enclosed cockpit area helm station dual helms easy access out onto the weather decks um, very nice uh, open aft deck there as well beautiful clear forward deck for entertainment uh, really just a, a beautiful, beautiful layout with a classic taste. And then, of course, your Passport 545 is a boat from a, a, a day gone by and its layout. Uh, you, 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 I'm sure, love it or hate it. I, I really do like it, although I can certainly see the benefit of the compromise that the Halberg Rassi brings to this as far as space and livability. Okay. Let's head down below decks here. Uh, the Genoa Yacht 55, radically different with uh, two isolated um, guest suites that are accessed from the cockpit through gull wing doors. Going forward then, you have your uh, saloon with a, an L-shaped 
uh, dinette on the port and a, a galley on the starboard with a little island there. Nicely laid out, a uh, smaller space than you'd be used to because you'd have normally have the feeling of those aft cabins, which are completely separate in this case. Obviously looking for the benefits that uh, and the privacy that catamarans offer. Uh, and then a really unique thing, double doors that lead into a, a very nice beanie forward uh, owner suite. Um, they've really done a nice job with that. And those double doors really create an impression of space when you open them up and you're in the saloon. Heading into that owner suite, very nice sort of a two and a half side access owner's berth and a nice uh, forward um, head and shower and then further forward your uh, your locker. Uh, the Dufour uh, 530 standard layout, uh, in my opinion, waste of space uh, split aft cabins and a, a pretty standard uh, forward V-berth uh, for the owner's suite. Uh, nothing really special about this other than the forward galley, which does make a, a sense of opening space up uh, in the saloon area. Uh, 54DS, again, completely different. This is all of your uh, berths. Uh, very nice forward V berth. Uh, they've done it because they they really have a lot more beam to this boat, uh, which we'll see in the numbers. Uh, then there's you've got your VIP suite midships to the port, your galley midship to the starboard, and then you've uh, through a different access point uh, you've got an aft twin suite there, and then storage on the starboard. Halberg Rassi, my favorite layout. I call it the oyster layout. Beautiful full beam aft berth for the owner. Uh, then your uh, your your galley on the port side. A beautiful saloon with a large L-shaped um, um, dinette on the starboard side. Something very uh, Halberg Rassi esque is is the uh, easy chairs on the port side and a bar in between instead of a, another settee. And if it's the same as the sixty nine. Uh, there, there's some kind of a pull-out footstool that you can put there too. Uh, heading further forward, you've got your uh, shared uh, head and dry, uh, dry head and shower, uh, Pullman berth to the starboard, and a very elegant V berth uh, in the forward area here. And, and in this case, you know, I'll even though it's a little narrow, I mean, you got to give it the nod once you see what it feels like when you're in there. Uh, the Passport 545 is, uh, it looks deceptively small. It doesn't feel that way when you're inside. Uh, your aft berth isn't, you know, that full beam, so you're sacrificing some, but wow, the finishing makes up for it. The saloon feels really good. The galley opens up very quickly, even underneath uh, the companionway down into the saloon. So you get a deceptively large feeling space and the finishes and everything about it feels so elegant. Then forward uh, into your uh, V-berth in the front and the Pullman to the side. Okay, let's look at some of these numbers now. Heading across the top line, we've got um, the uh, Dufour 530, which is really in a different class, of course, is the most economical. Among the comparables, uh, the most economical is really the Genoa Yacht 55. And I know there's a bunch of folks out there tearing their hair out, screaming it's not comparable, but bear with me. Uh, then you've got the Moody at 949, you know, basically a million bucks, a uh, million euro. Uh, and then the Passport uh, at a million 80 and the Halberd Rassi at a million 450. Uh, if we look along as far as um, length overall, it's the Moody at 56.33. At the waterline, it's the Halberd Rassi at 55. On the beam, it's the Moody, as I said, very beamy boat at 17.03. So 17 feet on the beam of that. Uh, and then on the draft, uh, the winner is the Passport with the least draft at 2.01 meters or 6.6 .6 feet. Um, the air draft, uh, it's the Halberg Rassi with the tallest mast at 88.3 feet. And then uh, displacement, <clears throat> it's the Passport at 17.5 uh, tons. Uh, next is the Dufour at 17.7, Genoa at 18.5, uh, the Moody at 24.7, and the Halberg Rassi at 28 even. 
Uh, the upwind sail area, it is the Halberg Rassi with 163 square meters or 1,755 square feet. If I'm looking across here, the next one is going to be the Moody at 100 and basically 142. Uh, then you're going to have the Genoa at 131, the Dufour at 122, and the Passport at 104. Heading down to the, uh, the power plants here, uh, it's the Moody uh, at the largest with uh, 148 horsepower. Um, and then into tank capacities, it's the Halberg Rassi well in the lead at uh, 1,050 uh, um, liters of fuel and 1,030 liters of water. Uh, the next one is the Passport. You can see who's ready to cross oceans here at 950 and 950 respectively. Uh, looking down now into that, uh, those, those numbers that I'm hoping you will bother your brokers and manufacturers representatives to start presenting because they're vital to any live aboard. Uh, that's interior square footage, exterior square footage, interior uh, enclosed storage volume, exterior locker volume, total fridge capacity, total freezer capacity. <clears throat> As it turns out, Halberg Rassi actually publishes their locker capacity and it's a staggering 10 cubic meters. For fridge and freezer capacity, all I could find was for the Moody and there we're looking at 2.5 square feet for each. Okay, moving now over to the more technical data. Uh, we're looking at hull construction and man oh man is it hard to find good information on a hull construction for monohulls. I, I'm not sure if nobody cares or I'm not sure what the deal is, but I'll tell you who cares. Passport cares because they have the best hull of the bunch. They have a solid fiberglass hull, hand laminated, uh, using stitched biaxial fiberglass, e-glass, in conjunction with 100% vinyl ester resin. Then they've got it reinforced with Kevlar. So this is uh, cored with foam above the waterline and solid, solid vinyl ester below the waterline. Um, everybody else is really uh, a vinyl ester outer, uh, a polyester inner, a foam core, save for our friends at Juneau uh, who above the waterline use a, an end grain balsa core. Uh, looking at battery banks, a uh, little, uh, I wasn't able to find it for the Dufour, but among the rest, it's uh, the Passport and the Halberg Rassi at uh, basically 1,350 amp hours each. Uh, the sail area to displacement or in indicators of performance, in this case, sail area to displacement is an indicator of power. That would put the Passport out in front at 19.52. Uh, next to the Dufour at 18, uh, sorry, next to the Genoa at 1909, Dufour at 1874, Halberg Rassi at 1806, and the Moody at 171. Next is displacement to hull length at the waterline, or an indicator of heaviness. Here, the lightest number wins, and it's the Genoa at 12497. Uh, the next one is the Dufour at 147. The next one is the Halberg Rassi at 165 then the Passport at 182, and the Moody at 183. Uh, the Comfort Ratio, uh, it's the Halberg Rassi out in front at 3901, and the Capsizing Formula is the Halberg Rassi at 171, and finally, hull, at hull Speed, it's the Halberg Rassi at 9.97. If you're enjoying the content, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Then share the channel with a couple of friends and hit the like button. It's free and really helps the channel. You can also join our crew on Patreon where you can enjoy ad-free viewing as well as downloads of the Excel specification and PowerPoint layout comparisons while helping the channel for a few bucks a month. You can find a link to the Naval Gazing Camp David Patreon channel in the description below where you can also click to receive our free ebook and information on some really cool virtual sailing training. And speaking of cool, my friends at catamaranshow.com have developed an amazing website and database of every catamaran available and scheduled to launch that allows you to do selectable in-depth comparisons of three cats at a time. 
They are also working on an incredible virtual tour and on-the-fly configurator that provides the option of fully immersive virtual reality with the appropriate 3D goggles. This is an incredible resource for anyone considering catamaran purchase. Have a look by clicking in the link and in the description below. Hopping on board, what would Sylvia say? Well, again, as long as she didn't know it heals, she'd be entranced by this vessel. I mean, look at every area you have here. It is utterly gorgeous. The real teak decks, uh, every angle is, is like, it just screams of elegance. I can't, it, it's hard to see in the videos, which is really why I have to be on board a vessel before I do a review because you just can't get it from a video. But the, the, the feeling of this vessel is one of absolute strength and top, top quality. Uh, let's look at a little navel gazing. Speaking of quality, I can't quite understand why everybody doesn't offer solid lifelines or life rails. Here on the MLs, they do it all the time. And I've seen some custom uh, Genoa 64s, such as this one, that have it. You can tell by the profile, it does nothing to the look of the vessel. All you know, you can't even really tell. But when you're walking along the side decks, the ability to put your hand on something stout and sturdy on the outside really increases your sense of safety. And here on Exodus, that lovely Hylus 57 that we looked at, you can see what you can do on the foredeck there with drop-down seats. Um, the Halberg Grassi, again, you can see everything feels stout and sturdy. The side decks aren't at quite as clear as you'd expect them to be, but they're very nice. They've obviously already thinking about monitored am amenities such as integrated solar, um, and all of your hatches are flush hatches. Look at the expanse of flush deck, like completely void of lines here. All your beautiful power furlers, your integrated um, uh, a bow sprit and, and your, your uh, chain and uh, windlass there. Nothing is getting in the way of your enjoyment up here. It feels absolutely fantastic. Uh, you've got all of your uh, side rails for your adjustments. Uh, and again, lots of ventilation here. You can actually see, as with the uh, oysters, you have forward opening, forward windshields in the, uh, the, the deck saloon, which is really nice for ventilation. Look at that sturdy frame around the real glass windshield looking forward. Uh, and again, these are 70s on the winches, really nice beefy stuff. Um, your cockpit, very safe feeling. You feel completely inside the boat, not on the boat. Your passengers feel completely safe. I know the guys from the Admiralty would salute this one. Uh, you've got lots of space on your uh, pedestal for good sized chart plotters. You've got handrails in the front there to grab onto. Um, all of your winches are within easy reach of your helmsman. Uh, you know, and, and everything is electric. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, again, there's your bow and your stern thruster. Um, that center cockpit table is really nice too in that it's very narrow when it's folded. So it's not as obnoxious as some of the center cockpit tables I've seen. Generally, I like the side, uh, you know, split side tables, but this one really nicely done. And of course, you have the benefit of a refrigerator in the center of it. Look at all of this beautiful gloss wood bright work trim. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. Uh, everything feels quality. Look at your handholds your integrated carved in handholds as you uh, enter the saloon and, and look at this woodwork. Um, this again, you know, <clears throat> it feels different than the Passport. The Passport feels completely classic. This one is that touch of modernity to a classic look and feel and yet you still have the warmth and that, that sense of solidity and classic design and quality uh, that you're looking for. There's your forward facing opening windows in your deck saloon. Look at the integrated, you know, the leatherette finish, the, the, the wooden uh, grab holes, the little touches of wood down the center in the ceiling. Absolutely spectacular. 
real wood fiddles around Corian countertops. This one was fully electric, uh, but you know, you, you'd have to be dead inside not to want to touch every fiddle in this in this boat. And even where they do the white uh, on the on the uh, walls there, you can see it has a a nod to a classic design with sort of the faux uh, boards, the lateral boards there. Uh, moving here, they've got carpet in this one, which is wonderful. Of course, the curved edges to the doors, which I absolutely love. Beautiful settees um, off on either side with a, a really nice uh, uh, either makeup table or desk for you to operate in this beautiful owner's cabin. Nice windows in the hull side. It'd be nice if there was a couple of them there. I think Oyster's done a great job with those seascape windows. And uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Gunfleet had much larger windows. That that would be something that I'd look here. But look in the ceiling there. You've got a beautiful skylight. Ton. I mean, you lay in bed, look at the stars. And everywhere you look is the warmth and sense of quality of real wood. It, it is, I don't know why, uh, catamaran manufacturers seem to be allergic to real wood. Uh, the, the nonsense that it's too heavy is hogwash given what you can see in uh, Outremer X5s in a thin veneer over the composite. Uh, I, I just don't get it. All of, all of the cats to me, to one degree or another, look like this head. And this head looks like it should as a head, but not as the interior of a boat where I want to live. Beautiful head. Um, again, classic uh, teak and holly fl uh, uh, cabin sole. Absolutely love it. I'm not sure if you saw that curved and carved vent in the corner there. Little details like that, absolutely spectacular. Lots of refrigeration, freezer space. You've got a, a, a stove vent above, and you've got lots of space in your settee and your dinette here. Very, very comfortable. Beautiful forward-facing nav. Um, very, very comfortable. Shelves up top for storage uh, and, and lots of control here. Uh, you can see, you know, you got piping around the edges of your cushions. They're not just sort of plopped there and stuffed. Everything has detail to it. And your uh, deck saloon, although not as, as high and open necessarily as an oyster, still brings in lots of light. Look down below that settee. Even the ventilation cover was carved wood unbelievable. Uh, moving forward, there is a very comfortable uh, uh, bunk area with a double on the bottom, it looks like, and a single on the top, or at least a one and a half on the bottom. Uh, and then um, you're across the way, you've got your uh, head, and then forward, what an elegant VIP suite. I'm not sure if you can see it here or get the feeling that I felt when I was in here, but uh, you know, it, it feels so elegant. I love the slat work they've done on the outer walls there. Uh, it just adds a sense of detail and elegance to this space. There's lots of stowage in here. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. You know, every, every touch here is, is beautiful. Looking again, you know, as you, you see every edge uh, has a has a hardwood uh, protection to it, solid wood, and um, you've got beautiful overhead skylights, and uh, you know again lots of sense of space and air and comfort here, um, and of course you have a, a here's your uh, shared head for the uh, side and forward cabins, very very comfortable. Uh, it's it's a dry head, uh, you know, with a separate shower area there and its own uh, glass door. Really feels comfortable and beautifully, beautifully done. Um, okay, swinging around and heading back into the saloon here. One more look around. I just can't get over those air vents uh, being carved wood. Uh, look at the companionway and how beautiful, beautiful it is. Uh, coming up again, lots of handholds as you exit. Uh, and, and of course, then you've got the high polish on 
the center table in the cockpit. I don't understand why every manufacturer doesn't have a high polish on their center table. It just adds so much to it. Okay, what in the world do we compare this work of marine art to? Again, uh, we're going to add 50% to the base price to do a comparative here. So we're working at uh, about uh, 1.6 million. And first up, we're looking at a 2020 outbound 56. So a three-year-old outbound 56. Very, very similar boat to uh, Passport in its layout and finish. A very nice boat. Uh, they're looking for 1.5 million versus 1.589. I do the Halberg Rassi in a heartbeat. Next up, we're looking at one of my favorites, a 2019 Hansa 588. So we're looking at a four-year-old boat here. They're asking 825 versus 1.6. So about half the price, but they're not even the same animal. Um, if I had the money, I'd do the Halberg Rassi. If not, I'd, I'd be happy with my uh, Hansa 588. Next up, we've got uh, 2018 Oyster 575. So five-year-old boat, um, and they're looking for 2.2 million. This is uh, an absolutely lovely vessel. You've got the seascape windows you can see there in the saloon. They're asking 2.2 versus our 1.6. Um, you know, for the delta of... Uh, 600 grand, I'd probably be happy with the Halberg Rassi unless I was dead set on doing the uh, Oyster World Rally, in which case I just have to get the Oyster. Okay, looking now at Monohull Puritan Purgatory. What do we compare this to on the um, catamaran side? Of course, we'll look at something 20% less, so we're looking at sort of 46 to 50 feet here. Um, First up is a 2019 Naughty Tech 46 Open for 615 grand, a less than half of our 1.6 million for our Halberg Rassi. Um, Naughty Tech would be the sort of the closest uh, other than uh, privilege um, to, to compare, uh, but uh, privilege doesn't offer something in this size. Um, I would do... Uh, if I had the money, I'd still go with the Albert Rossi. Um, but that, you know, if I don't, the Naughty Tech, I'd be happy. Next up is a 2021 Ultramare 45. Uh, they're looking for a million versus my million six. I'd probably do the Ultramare on this one, especially given that they do have a world rally for three years. Uh, and last up, we're looking at a 2021 Fountain Peugeot. Uh, Elba 45, they're looking for close to a million versus a million six for the Halberg Rassi. Um, you know, these, the, unfortunately, there's no real comparison here. Uh, I, if I had the 600, I'd do the Halberg Rassi. So given it's a monohull, Halberg Rassi did screamingly well. Now, the Dave score, how did she do? Well, we're starting, wow, that green line shows up real fast. So she did extremely well. She got 78 out of 100. So elegance on the interior, 9 out of 10. You could see why. On the exterior, 8 out of 10. Uh, comfort on the interior, 9 out of 10. On the exterior, 8 out of 10. Uh, the only thing I'd love is an option for a hard top. Uh, and probably anybody who loves Halberg Rassi just cringed there. Sorry. Uh, quality, uh, 8 out of 10, probably a 9 out of 10. Um, although I was a little disappointed in the hull materials. Uh, performance, a 7 out of 10. Lazy Sailor, 7 out of 10. Uh, condo, 9 out of 10. I mean, this thing felt like home. Uh, Geek, 6 out of 10. And value for the money, a solid 7 out of 10, giving us 78 out of 100. Uh, putting us uh, ahead of the passport where it should be. Um, slightly behind uh, a Rapido 53XS for very different reasons. Um, right in there with the Hylus 57. Uh, I mean, this is just a gorgeous lesson. For our Art of the Region this week, we're looking at Sunrise Over the Rooftops, 1903, by Eugene Frederick Jansen. Eugene Frederick Jansen was a Swedish painter known for his nighttime land and city skills, dominated by shades of blue caused him to sometimes be referred to as the blue painter. He lived his whole life together with his mother and brother in the southern part of Stockholm. They eventually settled in a flat 
on a height with a view over most of central Stockholm. Most of his paintings from the 1890s up to 1904 are night views uh, over this area, as he would have seen it from his home, or street views from various parts of the area. They are dominated by shades of blue, very visible brushstrokes, often crossing one another. Over the years, his paintings moved towards increasing simplification and abstraction. And at the end of his blue period, little more than the street lights and their reflections in the waters can be discerned from the mass of blue of the canvas. Well, that's our Waves, Wine, Art, and Ideas for another week. I do hope you enjoyed this vessel. Man, did it feel like home when you're in it. And, and classic yet modern. It was an absolute perfect balance of the two. I do wish that Halbert Grassi would build it. Anyways, have a great week. We'll see you back here next week. Cheers.